Shoulder pain with overhead movements is a common complaint. A previous thought was that this was caused by subacromial impingement syndrome, so as the arm would move up overhead, that the tissues in between the acromion process and the humerus would get impinged, leading to pain. And after a prolonged period of impingement, this would lead to development of an osteophyte, possibly leading to surgery to remove that osteophyte. In this video, we'll briefly go over what is now called subacromial shoulder pain, and we'll also give an exercise progression that can be used to restore overhead movements. Let's go over some of the details for subacromial shoulder pain. For a more in-depth review, I suggest reading this article on subacromial impingement by Jeremy Lewis. It goes over a lot of the research on why the impingement model isn't accurate when describing subacromial shoulder pain. But to summarize, it was believed that impingement of the subacromial bursa and the supraspinatus tendon between the acromion process and the humerus would lead to shoulder pain. And while we do see that the distance between the acromion process and the humerus decreases as we bring the shoulder to about 90 degrees of elevation, that the maximal compression on the supraspinatus actually occurs at less than 70 degrees. So if we're getting pain above that, then it's unlikely that it's actually caused by compression of the supraspinatus tendon. And to make this even a little bit more unclear, we actually see that the distance between the acromion process and the humerus is actually increased in those with subacromial shoulder pain. So the whole distance and elevation and compression thing seems to be murky at best. Additionally, when we look at the impingement model, impingement of the tissues would then lead to some sort of changes to the supraspinatus tendon. And so we'd expect that those changes would occur at the top of the supraspinatus tendon because that's the part that's actually making contact with that acromion process. But what we actually see is the changes to the supraspinatus tendon actually occur either inside the tendon or at the bottom side of the tendon called the articular side. And so we actually see that those changes in the supraspinatus tendon occur on the opposite side of where the acromion process actually is. Then when we look at osteophyte formation, bone spurs on the acromion process, the research by Cochrane has shown that surgeries to remove that bone spur don't actually provide any clinical benefits compared to a sham surgery or conservative care. So it appears that bone spurs don't actually play a big role in subacromial shoulder pain. Instead, it appears that subacromial shoulder pain might actually be a supraspinatus tendon issue, which is why exercise seems to be beneficial for these conditions, which brings us into doing some exercises for subacromial shoulder pain. The exercise that I like to incorporate for subacromial shoulder pain is a lateral raise. The reason why is because if we're dealing with a supraspinatus tendon issue, then we want to load it. So we can use an exercise band or some sort of weight, and we'll just slowly lift our arm up over three to four seconds, and then three to four seconds back down. We can raise our arm to as far as we actually feel comfortable. So if we can only go to 90 degrees, we can start there and then slowly build our way up or if we can go up through a larger range of motion, that's totally fine as well. And really, I think this is one of the main exercises that we need to focus on for subacromial shoulder pain because it specifically focuses on strengthening that supraspinatus tendon. If we wanna do some other exercises, maybe some banded external rotations to strengthen the infraspinatus and teres minor or some serratus punches or something like that for the serratus anterior muscle, we can definitely do those as well. But when it comes to strengthening, I think that we really need to highlight that supraspinatus tendon just because it seems to be the biggest role in subacromial shoulder pain. But one issue with a lot of rehab programs is that they stop here, that all the exercises are performed below 90 degrees, and that's not where we're experiencing pain with the overhead movements. And we know that fear of movement, specifically overhead movements, is a big issue for those with shoulder pain, which is why it's important to know that impingement isn't the mechanism for subacromial shoulder pain, leading to rotator cuff tears and then potentially surgery. So we wanna make sure that we have a plan to return to overhead movements as soon as they're tolerated. The first exercise is a quadruped rock, and it's just a simple exercise to start getting the shoulder up overhead. So to perform, we'll start in a quadruped position, and we're just gonna rock our hips back, which brings our arms into flexion here, we don't have to put much weight on our arms in this position and then back up. We can also have our arms in a couple different positions so we can go a little bit wider and repeat and then bring our arms a little bit closer and then rock back again. To increase the load on the shoulders, we can lift our knees up off the ground and for this one, we're gonna push our hands down into the ground, pushing our hips back. And so same thing, we can play with a couple different positions so we can go a little bit wider and then also a little bit more narrow as well. And then we can also progress this into a downward dog, which just again increases the load on the shoulders as we bring them into a flexed position. 
Since not everything in life is performed with our hands on the ground, the next exercise is a wall slide. So we'll take an exercise band, we're gonna have it around our wrist, and the goal is to keep our forearms parallel as we slide our arms up the wall. So what it looks like is this, we have our forearms parallel to each other, and we're gonna slowly slide our arms up the wall as far as we can go, and then slide them back down. As a progression, we can slide our arms up, and then lift off, and then back to the wall, and then slowly back down. And then I also like to do these in either a half kneeling or a standing position, so that way we're not using a wall for any sort of help. Everything stays the same as how we did them on the wall, so we'll have our forearms parallel to each other, slowly lift our arms up as far as we can go, and then back down to that starting position. And so just so you can see it from the side, lifting those arms up overhead, trying to keep tension on the band the entire time, and then back down. And then finally adding some sort of overhead press. So this can either be performed with an exercise band or with some sort of weight, but the goal is just to start getting us comfortable and confident with some sort of overhead press so that we know that the shoulder is able to tolerate it. So hopefully this video on subacromial shoulder pain was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you made it this far in the video, leave in the comment section below Supraspinatus so that I know that you made it to the end of the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.